Dodger Stadium, everybody knows Clayton Kershaw and Zach Greinke, but Mike Bullsinger has been a solid number three for the Los Angeles Dodgers all season. Here's my interview with the ace. Well, first and foremost, we're here with Mike Bullsinger from the Los Angeles Dodgers, and the most important question I have to ask you is, you're from McKinney, Texas, right? Yes, I live in Okay, so are you a Cowboy fan? No, I was actually, my whole family's from Chicago. I was born there, I lived there for probably six years, but always kept going back every every winter, actually. And uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Bears fan. So you're a, he is, he is a, bear, a bona fide Bears fan then, living near Dallas. How is that? It's interesting. I that, bet. Uh, it's overcome with Cowboy fans. It's <laughs> me, one of my friends, he's a Minnesota Vikings fan, so usually it's just me and him versus everyone else in the state of Texas. Of so. course, that's right. So what's it been like for you since you've been here as a part of the Dodgers team? It's been fun. Um, if you can notice, I'm always smiling. You are. And having a good time. Um, you just gotta enjoy the moment. You know, I've had a few rough starts, but you just gotta you gotta forget about those kind of things. And, and you know, there's an old saying that you learn more from when you lose than when you win. So uh, it's interesting how much I've learned the past two, two starts about myself and, and what I need to do. And just talking with you know, Honeycutt, and I just learned so much from them. He's definitely molding me into the type of pitch I want to be. But what I love about you guys too, especially all the pictures, is that you're always talking and sharing information. It's got to be a huge help as well. Oh yeah. You know, sometimes not even talking. It's uh, me just observing. You know, I really look at uh, that group. You know, right. Just kind. He's, kind of, he's kind of good, right? He's he's really good. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it's just some. It's you know, I watch him. I guess kind of in a freaky way. Um, but I just I watch how he just goes about his business, how he throws, how he does his bullpens. You know, I kind of want to try and mimic what he kind of does because it kind of fits into what kind of pitcher I want to be like. Um, you know, I, I love the way he pitches, I love the way he mixes up things. And he's definitely someone that you know, I, you know I look up to as a pitcher. And it's, it's awesome that I'm on the same team as him. And I don't to take it to him. You know, I, I often want to ask starting pitchers, you have, you know, days in between starts. Do you find yourself watching even opposing pitchers when you're out here for every game? Because you obviously you can't just stand there and do nothing. Like, you have to wait until the next start. So what do you find yourself mentally doing? Yeah, you kind of, you know, it's just like hitters. You know, hitters are always looking at other guys' yeah. swings and stuff like that. And, you know, when you're not doing anything, you're kind of looking at the other pitchers. Especially the really talented and good ones, you're kind of analyzing them and you know, seeing what they're doing. Um, you know, the way I pitch isn't really, you know, it never really originated from me. It's me basically putting a bunch of things that I've seen in different pictures and kind of putting it together and hoping that something good comes from yeah. it. And um, but that's you know that's really what I've done. So it's it's amazing to kind of look at the different styles of pictures, you know, with. Uh, yeah. On the mountain. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's definitely a guy that you know, I'll be up on the rail watching just because the way he pitches is, you know, it's amazing. You know, his mechanics and everything like that is it's awesome to watch. And to continue with pitching here at the Dodgers, I caught up with J.P. Howell, who is not only committed to baseball, he's committed to a whole lot more. We are here with J.P. Howell. Now, J.P., we're going to talk a little baseball, but first I wanted to talk to you about um, the work that you do with kids with bullying. Uh, what made you sort of champion that cause? Uh, you know, we just something that it just came natural to me. It was easy. I think um, it affects all of us at some point. We've either gone through it, witnessed it, or, you know, tried to help someone get along through it. And um, for, me, for me, you know, I, I don't like seeing kids, you know, shy away from that because I know how, uh, you know, intimidating that can be and probably uh, set a lot of fear in you and it may stick with you for a long time. So... If they could just understand it, and I also feel bad for the bully as well, you know, because I know he's probably going through some things, and uh, so that's something we just wanted to attack, and uh, it might, you know, help improve some things down the road. And I know your wife, you and your wife both have been out to schools, and what I think is so cool is when I saw some of the video is the kids look at you, of course they see the Dodger blue and the uniform, and they really look up to you, and that must be a neat feeling for you. It is, it is. It's something, I, I've been there, you know, I know what that's like. Um, I was a kid, and, um, you know, I, I looked up to the baseball players too, and, um, here I am fortunate to be sitting in my seat, and uh, it, I can do anything but share. Which is really great. Now, talking a little bit about baseball, you've been in a very unique uh, place this year because when Kelly went down, they called upon you to be the closer. And I know that everybody as a pitcher, your roles are very specific, but you adapted to that very easily. Why was that? I mean, I've done it before uh, when, earlier in my career, and uh, you know, playing uh, in my, you know, I've done, I've been a starter, I've been a closer, I've been 
you know, the guy goes three innings out of the bullpen or one out, you know, so uh, I've done it all, and that's just uh, it's part of the fun of the, the long journey of the season. You know, I read that you said that if we can't, you know, switch roles or pick each other up, then we're not a very good team. That's true. I mean, if you can't do it, especially uh, with Kenley being out, it, was only, it wasn't that long of a time, you know, it was only a month, month and a half or whatever, and um, uh, if you can't do that, you're going to have some trouble. You, know, you guys had so many new guys this year in spring training. How long did it take for you guys to kind of mesh together? It took very. It's it's still going. It's still going. It's always a work in progress. You know, um, but it's better. It's much better. It's improving, and that's what you want to see right about now. Uh, you want it to become more natural. You don't want. You know, I, I know those guys. I know what I can do. I know I can joke. Who I can't joke with, and uh, that's that's the important part. I know one of the the people here in this organization that you knew very well was Andrew Friedman. Talk yeah. about that. He's the, he's the greatest man. I've known him since uh, you know since I was with the Rays, and that started in 2006. He traded for me, um, gave me a huge opportunity over there in Tampa, and uh, he's always uh, had my back ever since I can remember. So it's uh, having him here. It's a it's a good feeling. Once you get to know a GM, what kind of conversations do you have with them just kind of throughout the season? You know, he's a unique he's a unique GM. Uh, it's usually uh, you know other guys. You may just stick to baseball most of the time, but with him, it's probably the, least, the, the thing we talk about least. You know, right. yeah, he's one of those guys. He's, uh, you know, he likes to talk about normal things. He just, uh, he doesn't want to, you know, be. We're here all day, every day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We could, you know, we see each other a lot. So with him, he likes to, to change the subject as well. Yeah, okay. Now, what kind of things do you like to do when you're not playing baseball? Me, I'm a. Uh, I got. I think I got a competitive problem, so I play a lot of <laughs> video games. I got to be competing, and uh, it keeps me quiet. My wife loves it, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's it's, a, it's also somewhat healthy. <laughs> what kind of video games? It's uh, I played baseball games. Uh, you know, the game Call of Duty. It's a shooting game, yeah. and uh, you know, stuff like that. So those are my two hot ones right now. All right, that will do it for this show. But on our next show, get ready for some NFL football. I'll be with the Cowboys and the Raiders, and of course, lots more news from the Dodgers and the Angels. And remember, you can watch Playing the Field 24/7 at PlayingTheFieldTV.com. I'm Maria Sorio from Dodger Stadium, and we'll see you next time.